Amen. Amen. You too. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, thank you for revealing yourself through your written word, Lord, and feeding our souls with your word, Lord, so we may know who you are, how to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ by doing the will of God, Lord. God, please open our hearts, open our minds, Lord, as we listen to your word, Lord, and humbly obey and follow you, Lord. God, please fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit so I can deliver your word with boldness and your wisdom. God, we thank you, we love you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good? Good to see you all. I'm so happy to see you all. Very excited about how God is going to work in us as the Word of God is proclaimed to us every time that uh, we listen to God's Word because His Word is living and active and powerful enough to change us and transform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Psalm 121 is one of the songs sung by pilgrims, Israelites living far from Jerusalem on their journey to Jerusalem to celebrate annual festivals like Passover, the Feast of, Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of Tabernacles. Today I want to share with you three essential truths from this passage. Main point one. First, our Lord is powerful God. Our Lord is a powerful God. Let me read verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does, where, from where does my help come? Why does the psalmist, the writer of the psalm say, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The word hills here can be translated as mountains. So why is the psalmist, the writer of the psalm, lifting up his eyes to the mountains? What mountains might the psalmist be facing right now? Since we don't really know exactly where the person lived and from where he set out on his journey to the temple of Jerusalem, we cannot be sure about which mountains the psalmist facing and why he's looking up to the mountains right now. Scholars have different opinions on this as well. Some scholars, some say, some suggest that the mountains the psalmist sees refer to Mount Zion, symbolizing the presence of God. Other scholars argue that these mountains indicate dangerous place filled with robbers and potential threats. Personally, I agree with the second opinion that the mountains the Sami sees are filled with potential dangers, such as hiding robbers or dangerous animals or cliff, like a steep cliffs. The reason I believe this is because after saying, I lift up my eyes to the hill, the psalmist says, he immediately asks himself, where does my health come from? When he faces hardships and difficulties in life, obstacles that we don't, really, we don't really know how to handle, we often ask ourselves, how can, how can I go this through? How can I go this through? How can I get through this? What, what am I supposed to do? Or, who is going to help me? I desperately need help from someone right now. Where does my help come from, right? For this reason, I believe that the mountain the psalmist looked at were those he had to pass over before reaching Jerusalem, which likely filled him with fear, anxieties and worries yet as he looked at those mountains he declared where does my help come from then in verse 2 he answered my help come from the lord who made heaven and earth 
The psalmist acknowledged that no matter how large the mountains before him were, or how many dangerous, how many dangers they might hold, he looked up and looked at them and remembered God. Even though the mountains brought him worries, fear, and anxieties, he declared that his health comes from the Lord. When you think about it, this is an incredible confession. Like the psalmist on his journey to Jerusalem, we are also on our journey toward the kingdom of heaven, right? right? And just as the psalmist faced huge mountain-like obstacles, we too encounter challenges and fear along the way. But when he faced huge challenges, what do you do? Who do you turn to? Instead of turning to God or declaring that He is our help, God is the source of our help, we often feel overwhelmed, frustrated, depressed, or defeated by life issues. Then, how was the psalmist able to confidently declare that my help comes from the Lord? as he faced the mountains that brought in fear and worries. What kinds of faith did he have in God? His faith was strongly based on the part of God who created the heaven and earth, including the very mountains he looked at right now. Moreover, he believed that the God he trusted was not only the creator of all things, but also the one who rules over everything. Thus, no matter how high or imposing the mountains before him were, or what dangers they might hold, he trusted that God who made heaven and earth and who made those mountains were sovereign over all. That's why, as he looked at the mountains, he was able to confidently declare that my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My brothers and sisters, when you face the great challenges or obstacles in life, or when you are going through hardships and difficulties, who do you turn to? Like the psalmist, do you turn to God? Do you confess and declare that your help comes from God alone? Remember this, our Lord is the creator of the entire universe. And with His power and wisdom and knowledge, He reigns and sustains everything He created. No matter how great the problems in your life may seem, God is far greater. He is the powerful God who made heaven and earth. He is powerful God who rules, of, who rules over all. Like the psalmist, let us keep in mind that our Lord is the powerful God who created and reigns over heaven and earth. Amen? Second, our Lord is a tireless God. Again, our Lord is a tireless God. The psalmist who used I and my in verses 1 to 2 now speaks to all of us. Let me read verses two, uh, 3 to 4. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. In verses 1 to 2, the psalmist emphasized God's power as the creator of heaven and earth. And in verses 3 to 4, he declares that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. But what does this mean? It means that our God, our Lord, is a tireless God. In other words, He never rests, but is always watching over us ready to help us whenever we need his, his help. Simply put, He's the one we can put our faith in, and He's the one we can fully rely on at any time. My third child is Joel, as you know. 
He needs his parents to be with him all the time from the moment he wakes up until he goes to sleep. If we disappear from his sight, he is so scared and cries. A few days ago, my wife asked me to take care of him for about four hours. So I said, okay. And the reason I said yes was because even though I knew that it was really, really hard and demand, demanding and tiring to take care of Joel, was because I knew that Joel's nap time was 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And she asked me to take care of him at 10 a.m. So I said, okay. And I took care of him. And one hour later, he was okay. After 11.30, he was totally fine. He didn't look tired at all. And 12, he was okay. He didn't go to bed. He didn't take a nap. So what I did was to pretending. I was pretending that I was sleeping, snoring and closing my eyes. And I saw Samuel, um, I saw Joel, how he reacted. Can you guess how he reacted? He looked at me, pretending to sleep, snoring and closing eyes. He was so scared. And then he grabbed one of his toy, Robert, and he threw this toy at my face. And he grabbed my hair and, you know, and shouted and tried to wake me up. Why? Did Joel react so anxiously like that? Why? I'm pretty sure he thought that if his dad was sleeping, he wouldn't be able to protect him. He wouldn't be able to take care of him, which is why he became very, very, very afraid and tired, tried to, afraid and tried to wake me up. In the same way, no matter how powerful our God is, if he were like us, if we grew tired, needed to rest, or even took breaks, could we fully put our faith in God? If we face massive and mountain-like problems, would you still feel certain of God's help? Of course not. If God, like humans, worked hard and became weary, needing to rest, it would be very difficult for us to trust in His help at all times. Moreover, if God slept or took breaks, it would fill us with worries and anxieties and fear like Joel experienced. But Psalmist says in verse, verses 3 to 4, He said, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The psalmist emphasized over and over that God neither slumbers nor sleep, which means that He's always keeping us and watching over us and taking care of us. Dear brothers and sisters, our Lord is our tireless God. He neither slumbers nor sleeps, but always watches over us and ready to help us. May we trust in Him and rely on His help at all times. Amen? Amen. Last, our God always keeps us. Our God always keeps us. In today's passage, the verb keeps appears very frequently. Like more than five times. Let me show you. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at the screen. Verse 1, verse 3. He who keeps you. For, behold, he who keeps. And 7, the Lord will keep you. And he will keep your life. And 8, the Lord will keep your going out. The Hebrew, Hebrew word for keep means to protect, guard, watch out. Or, watch, sorry, watch over and care for. In other words, the psalmist highlights that God is not only powerful and tireless, but also continually watching over us, guarding us, protecting us, and keeping us, and caring for us, and attentively looking after us. Let me read verse 5. 
The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The psalmist said that God is our shade. But what does this mean? When you go outside and are exposed to the scorching sun, we need shade to protect ourselves from its harmful effects, right? So the phrase, the Lord is your shade, means God is protecting us from harm. And the word shade carries profound meaning. This term, shade, shade, appears ten times in the book of Psalms. And is often used in the expressions like under the shade of your wings. It brings to mind the image of mother bird taking care of, looking after, and protecting her chicks. Also, Isaiah chapter um, 51, 16 says, And I have put my words in your mouth and cover you in the shadow of my hand. The same word. It is as if God is holding us in his hand. In verse 6, the sun, will not, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. What does it mean? The sun and the moon symbolize all danger that occur during the day and night. In, our, in other words, God protects us from every possible danger we might face. And the psalmist used a rhetorical device called merism here. Merism is a way of using two opposite, two opposite and related words to express the whole picture. Instead of listing everything, mentioning everything, it used two extremes to imply everything in between. So in verse 6, day and night means all the time between day and night. It shows that God protects us not just at certain times, but continually, like 24 hours a day. In verse 7, it says that the Lord will keep us from the evil, from all evil, and He will protect our lives. And in verse 8, let me read it for you. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. In verse 8, the psalmist used the merism again with the phrase, you're going out and coming in. This phrase referred to every aspect of your lives, covering all our actions and movements. In other words, coming and going signifies every part of our lives, meaning that God protects us in every area and with every mo movement we make. Moreover, the psalmist declares that God will keep and protect us for, from now and forever. My brothers and sisters, do you believe that God is constantly holding your life in His hands? Do you believe that He's always keeping you and watching over you? If we truly believe this, even when we face great challenges, and obstacles in life, you won't be afraid or depressed or frustrated or discouraged. Instead, you will praise God's greatness, faithfulness, goodness, awesomeness, and trust in His protection over every moment of your life. When I was serving in South Korea about maybe 20 years ago, our entire church went on a retreat to the seaside. I took a three-year-old girl named Yeun to the ocean, and it was her first time there. I carried Yeun into a deep, deeper part of the water where it rose to my chest here. While it wasn't deep for me, but it was very, very deep for her, and there were waves. So I was concerned and worried, thinking that she might be scared soon. However, Yen's face looked so calm and peaceful. And as we entered the water together, instead of being, instead of being afraid, she seemed to enjoy herself. I was really curious, so I asked her, 
Yeah, aren't you afraid? Aren't you scared? Even though this happened 15 years ago, I still remember her answer. She said with a bright smile. She said, no, not at all. Because you are bigger than the sea. Since the water only came up to my chest, Yen thought, she might have thought, must have thought that I was bigger than the sea. Despite the deep water and waves, being potentially scary and dangerous for her. She felt peace and happiness because I was holding her. What did you think when you, when you heard this story? If we consider the sea as Yeon entered, as the huge mountains of worries, anxieties, and, and fears, and difficulties, and trials you face, do you, like Yeon, Trust that God is holding your life in His hands with His wisdom, knowledge, and power that created and sustained the entire universe? Do you confess that the Lord protects you from all harm and watches over you when you are in trouble? May all of us trust in God, the creator of heaven and earth, who always keeps protecting watches over and looks after us. In conclusion, worship team, please come to the front. What is the huge mountain you are facing right now? What do you do when you encounter obstacles that bring fear and worry? Who do you turn to when you are in trouble? Just like the psalmist confession today, our Lord is the all-powerful God who rules, governs, controls, reigns over all creation. He is the God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. He always keeps us and watches over every moment of our lives, holding us and protecting us. He is our Heavenly Father who is now with us and will be with us forever. Let us live our lives by fully trusting in our Lord, our God. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your word and the reminder today that no matter how large the mountains we face, you are with us, keeping us, caring for us, guarding us, protecting us. We confess that it's often, easy, it's often easy to feel overwhelmed by life challenges. But today, Lord, we turn our eyes to you, the source of our help and strength. God, we know that you never grow weary. You never grow tired. You never leave us. God, please help us to remember that like a mother birth covering her cheeks. He holds us in the shadow of your hand, surrounding us with your unfailing love. God, please empower us to live with this faith in you, Lord. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.